Hi guys, we're back again. Kenrich Products, showing you how to change out your repair kit for your GP3A air pump, which this is one of our other popular pumps from Kenrich Products. Uh, so this video is going to go through the demonstration of changing out your flapper valves and diaphragm on a GP3A. Plastic body and metal body, like our other pumps, same repair kits, same diaphragm, same flapper valves, same way to remove old and replace and put the new back on and rebuild. So they're identical. So we're going to start with this. Again, on this pump, the tools that you'll need would be just a flathead screwdriver. Ours is kind of dirty, but it works. A 5 16 socket and a 7 16 uh, wrench. <clears throat> reason for the nut driver or socket head driver is you want to loosen this clamp in the back that's one of the things you want to do just like on our other pumps just the one because you want to be able to loosen that up good and slide it back that will allow you to when we get to that point take the pump body off to change the flapper valve so that's done out of the way the other thing is with your flathead screwdriver for the sake of time, I've already done it, but you want to, again, on this pumps, we do have the 10 slot headed screws, just like on our one and twos, but uh, you want to drop all the nuts, take out all the uh, screws. You don't want to lose your hardware, obviously. But with that said, if you do lose any of your hardware or strips out, just like any parts, especially on the air pump, I do want to say, we have everything here in stock at Kenridge Products. Just a matter of calling in and ordering it over the phone and we can get it shipped off to you. So we took all the screws, the slot headed screws off. The thing with the air pump is you gotta be a little bit more careful obviously because you got lines, components that cost money and are expensive, you don't wanna damage or break them. So in this case, I'm gonna take this pump and put it down in the, the workbench as if it was on the field. I do want to say though, you also want to take out your four one inch cap screws that are actually mounting the pump body to the baseboard. For time, I took them out already except for one. It's just the one cap screw with the lock washer, one inch cap screw. You're going to have four of them and as you can see that releases the whole body. Now you're free. At this point I'm going to move this down on a flatter surface just so you can see better what we're doing here. As far as your GT3A air pump, you want to remove your caps through your slotted head screws and then you just want to roll this over gently. Again, all your lines, if you can get over here and see, all your lines are obviously still connected. We did not disconnect anything. So just lay that over. Very simple. Then you take your Slot headed uh, flat screwdriver into the slotted uh, uh, truss head screw here. Lost my train of thought for a moment. And you want to hold your pump body and unscrew that. This comes out a little different than your GP1, GP2, or 6 or 7. Now you'll notice your air pump has the shaft on the bottom of the air piston, okay? We don't have a, a clevis pin per se like our other pumps. The shaft is built into the, to the piston. We have this little extension as we call it, it's aluminum extension. So you do, as you're unscrewing your truss head screw, you're actually unscrewing this whole thing out, which you want to do. That point, you grab that adapter. You got two flats, so you can grab onto it if you need to use a wrench, but it shouldn't be that tight. Then you can go ahead and take apart your uh, clevis, we call clevis assembly, truss head screw, <clears throat> stainless steel washer, plastic button, You're taking off your diaphragm, theoretically this would be the bad one. There's your washer, plastic button, the diaphragm goes down position. Make sure it goes around the boss, just like we stress on our clevises for ones and twos. Second button, it's facing up so you can see the bosses in there. Then your smaller washer. Then replace your screw back on. 
and you can just go finger tight then bring your screwdriver in and make it snug then you go back to your pump body make sure you line up this is stainless this is aluminum so you want to make sure you don't cross your threads get it started and it should spin right on for you then you take your screwdriver and just snug it up voila you're done lay this back down gently okay when you're done with that and you want to get to your flapper valves now some people change just their diaphragm and their flapper valves every other time that's your prerogative your pro whatever you want to do I say change everything at the same time so if you don't want to change your flapper valves and they're still good and operating then what you want to do is just come back and put the, your your top uh, your top part of your pump excuse me back on but before you do that you want to go through and mount your cap screws make sure everything's tight so you're going to change your flapper valves so you took out the cap screws already and this one the same way you want to be gentle and wiggle it out and the reason why I say that is because you do have, and you can go up and down as well, you do have, um, if you can get back in here and see, you do have a real tight spot where the regulator almost touches the uh, pump body. So you've got to be careful doing that. And it's just a matter of wiggling it out. And it'll come out. There you go. They sit in here and tight, especially if they've sat for some time with the clamp on. They want to get a little snug. But you can get it out of there. It's not a hard thing. You do the same with the metal body. This one, of course, plastic body, you have the puck. Always make sure that puck goes back when you're reassembling. All righty. So we at the point now where we're going to change the flapper valves in the repair kit. We've already pulled the pump body off. Dis dis disconnected it from the baseboard and the hose for the sake of time <clears throat> as I did in all the other videos I already went ahead and unscrewed all the screws for sake of time so unscrew all six on both sides you got your outlet and your inlet it's kind of I say a no-brainer the outlets gonna be longer neck than the inlet so don't you can't really get confused with that knock your screws out just push them through and you could tell that on the outlet flange, the way the, the flapper valve sits, okay? So when you take it off, theoretically, this would be your old flapper valve. You see how it came out? This bulge this part on the flapper valve with the little tip, that was facing on the inside, okay? And this is where a lot of people make the mistake of putting it in wrong, and that causes their pump not to work. The rear the inlet which I call the rear the same thing screws out don't lose them and by the way if you do lose any of your screws or hardware things get stripped out what have you or any part of these pumps even the air pump we have every single piece and part that you'll ever need for your air pump so you won't be stranded okay on the website when you click onto the pump there's owners manuals and that tells you every part diagram every part every piece that we sell for our pump so that's just a little tidbit there so you threw the old flapper valves away you got your new one here we are so you got your two new flapper valves okay the, your, your your pump body make sure there's no dry grout in there it's kind of cleaned up putting this back is very important okay we'll go with the outlet or the inlet excuse me first that's the rear you want to make sure that the flapper valve one the hinge there's a hinge on all these so they do hinge that hinge has to be to the top of the pump so to make it easier you want to make sure that the hinge is up where it says inlet and outlet the top of the pump so there's your new flapper valve you put it in you get your screws you drop your screws in put your nuts on and tighten it I recommend tightening like you tightening it like you do a car tire kitty corner star size so you go corner to corner corner to corner then across that helps seat everything evenly instead of going around in a clockwise or counterclockwise it does want to get cocked on you the outlet flange same thing you want to make sure the little tip the bulge is facing out you just put it on put your 
six screws back through, get your nuts, hold it with your finger, use a screwdriver, tighten them up, simple as that. It takes a little time, but it's gonna be worth it in the long run when everything's done correctly. So that's the disassemble of the pump body with the flapper valves. All right, so we're back with the GP3A uh, flapper valve change out. We've already done that. Uh, good way, again, to know that they went in the right with the hinge to the top. The flow, the direction where the flappers are supposed to open up is you can take your pump body like your ones and twos, flip that up, put your finger in there. You can catch that, t that little nipple and flick that up and do the same in the front. You hear that popping and it's springing back and smacking. That's what you want. If you can or you feel that little tit as we call it inside if it's not there it's on the back side you got it wrong you're going to have to take it apart turn it around that's why it's always good to do that the first time now what we'll do from there is that's all done your diaphragm's been changed again be careful because of the lines you don't want to be pulling them out of the uh, acrylic block that's in this black box so what you want to do from this point is you want to go ahead and put this back in which is the same motion you just turning it and twisting it and trying to get it in, not a problem, it's there. Then what you want to do is you want to pick up gently this part, which is the top part of your core pump, and you want to make sure, again like in our other pumps, you want to make sure that this rim or this rubber uh, seal as we call it, sits inside the trough. And that's also going to be the same uh, rule of thumb with the metal pump bodies too, which we have a partially built core pump for the air pumps and of course this is the stripped down version metal body uh, same with your metal body if you're changing out your repair kits you can also do the flick test as well on these and it's that tells you their orientation is correct again you want the flow uh, here's the arrow the grout is flowing in one direction and that's obviously um, the way it's supposed to be so again hinges have to open this way just to show you that's a kind of what it looks like stripped down version uh, then when we're done here you want to go and repeat the process in reverse you want to put your slot headed screws 10 of them around to hold your clamp ring down okay just line up the holes your hoses are fine not to do anything with that um, put your 10 screws in the 10 nuts and then you have your four one inch cap screws with lock washer and SAE washer and nut for the bottom to mount your pump back to your baseboard, okay? Um, something I forgot to say in the beginning of the video, obviously, most people know this, please make sure your air is disconnected. You don't want any charged air in the system when you're doing this. So that means shut your yellow valve off to where it bleeds out the air, disconnect your line before you do anything to your pump. That's anything to it. So I want to throw that in there. I forgot to mention that in the beginning. So we're back again in our little test center that we have for our GP3A. It's just a little place where we like to test them. Obviously, we test every pump before we ship. Um, just a little side note real quick, like our other pumps, uh, we do have repair kits. Of course, two flapper valves, a diaphragm. Well, when you get it shipped to you uh, via mail or UPS, it comes in a little uh, baggie, real simple. But that's the repair kit. It will come with an instruction manual, or you can watch the video. But anyway, that's what it is there. So we put everything back. We mounted it, tightened it. Everything's back to where it was, square one. Again, we're just replicating if this was a used pump on the field, and you had to change out your repair kit. A quick way to test it when you're done, as I did the, the flapper valve check with you guys earlier, uh, once it's hooked up to air, there's another way you can test it. Um, I'm just going to do a real quick demonstration of how we test it and what we look for. I do the same way I do with the other pumps. I put the palm of my hand gently over, with little pressure, over the outlet flange as it's pumping. You want that air actuating out. It, it simulates grout coming out. Obviously it's empty. Once it's full, of course, it's going to work even harder and better and more efficient. But this is just a check. You can feel the air and hear the air coming out against your hand with force, with pressure. That tells me that the flapper valves are incorrectly, it's working correctly, and there you go. So, a little noisy, but...
plug your air in, obviously, with you already have the pump. And this is a good thing, too, to do with your pumps if you first time users or when you first get your brand new pump as well. This is another sign you can, or another way, excuse me, you can test your pump before you even start with grub. So you charge your system, that goes on. All of our pumps are factory set when they leave the shop. If you already have one in your possession, of course your settings are gonna be different because uh, according to your, your work. So you turn the pump on, the pump is going. It's factory set at 16 PSI with the max. Now you can also hear, and it's got the spot right where you want it for stroke control, right there. So and you can hear the air and you can feel it coming out on the palm of your hand, and that's what you want. If you can feel and hear that, then that's normal. That's working. If you don't get this kind of action and this pressure and air coming out in the end, you did something wrong. Again, the max is 60 PSI, the stroke control is set to where it's at, and again with the air coming out, simulates kind of what grout would be doing. Of course, you get more pressure when this is full of grout. This is obviously empty now, and that's it. Again, keep in mind, whenever you're working on it or done with it, you want to discharge your air, then remove your line. So that's pretty much the repair kit. Uh, breakdown and how to do it and the do's and don'ts again when you take your top portion off with the cylinder and clamp ring you just want to lay it off to the side gently without destroying any lines if something does break or malfunctions on you or need replacement parts with all of our pumps we have them here at Kenridge products we manufacture sell build and ship and test right out of this facility so we're not shipping you all over the world looking for something we got them right here in the great Pacific Northwest. Again, thanks for visiting and we'll see you on the next video.